Um, yes, I, I am more than just a diver, um, but I think this is probably my biggest audience and my shortest talk, so to help I would have imagined you all naked, but given the heat that's put you at an advantage, so we'll <laughs> move into my talk and I've just prepared a long embarrassed silence at the end if I don't have enough material. Um, what I'm going to tell you about is an area of outstanding natural beauty which pretty much nobody sees. It's an extra opportunity for all of you, um, and so I'll talk about the, the chalk reef that just lies on North Norfolk's doorstep, quite, quite literally. Oh, there's my gibbet. Um, the challenge here is to join up sort of the, the, the public and the, the locals who are very, very aware, aware of Norfolk's profile and its, its beauty with the, the sea at the edge, make the connection between the two. So lots of divers who well know that the benefits of going underwater, but then the local community here, we've got a, a painter who has now adopted divers as a specialist subject. I don't think you'll sell anything, but um, it's nice when occasionally an activity and a new area can become sort of an appreciated part, an asset to an already sort of attractive tourist area. Um, I come from Sea Search. I'm not just a diver. Community um, coordinate Sea Search, and we train amateur divers to conduct wildlife surveys. Um, the southern coasts used to have most surveys. They're better known for diving, better known for boating. Um, and so we had to sort of energize our local divers because we had the fewest um, surveys nationally. Uh, but Norfolk has some great diving, so all we had to do was sort of stretch that awareness, stop people heading to other coasts with better PR, uh, because we needed the results from a scientific point of view and it would benefit the area and the awareness of the issue. Um, the public, that's the media and divers as well, pretty much thought of the North Sea as a barren wasteland. There was nothing there, nothing worth doing. You could, you could throw whatever you liked into it, you could trawl through it, you could stick wind farms in it, and it didn't matter. Um, but it, it does. Um, the public that public perception really reduced the opportunities for funding and support for any of the issues. And that might be financial funding or just volunteer funding with their time. If you couldn't make it worth their while, why, why would they come? Why would they give it themselves? So there I am trying to carry the message over to an, an uninterested public as I merge from the sea. <laughs> They're avoiding you. <laughs> very much so, very much so. I think if, if you meet a, a man coming out of the sea dressed in rubber, what would you do? <laughs> Asking for a chocolate. <laughs> you would have been at risk when you were younger. Um, but the, the ANOB, Norfolk ANOB, really doesn't stop at the shore at all. We have a fantastic reef. Much of East Anglia's coast, or shore coast, is sand and gravel. It doesn't give much clue to the, the exciting life, which tends to congregate around solid objects, wrecks, reefs. And divers love wrecks. And what used to draw a small number of divers to the North Norfolk coast was in particularly one wreck, and we have twin girls actually. We have Vera and Rosalie, both sunk during the First World War. Lovely wrecks, but that was what the divers would come up for. They knew pretty much nothing else about the coast, um, but we used those as a publicity tool um, by calling them the Twin Wreck Challenge, by producing a little web page that explained how people could roll up, dive those two from the shore. We created a little bit of buzz around the coast. Um, but as a conservation diver, our primary interest is the wild habitat, the native natural habitat. Um, but we have a reef. And we've discovered that it's the longest in Europe, at the very least. Um, there's, there's not really a good league table of long chalk reefs, um, but we are at least the longest in Europe. And it is very much a hidden AONB. Um, you can see it's, it's lovely that the residents are charming <laughs> um, and very, very entertaining. It's, it's a wonderful place to be. This is about 20 feet down, just off the front of Sheringham. So those poor souls baking themselves, like, like we're baking here today, um, are missing out on what is actually some of the warmest water in the UK during the summer. And it's getting these points across. People will assume that the sea is always cold, it's always brown, and there's nothing in it. And you simply need to point out some sort of basic facts of life. This sea is shallow. It shuffles backwards and forwards. It's nice and warm. It's got this 
the prehistoric chalk layer, um, which sorted out our last greenhouse crisis for us. And so there's, there's geological interest, there's biological interest, and it's, it's a good looking place to be. You can enjoy it just from a visual perspective. And if it was on land, it would be appreciated and, and designated. And so with 20 miles of that reef and five wrecks on it, what we aim to do is get people to dive, to see it, to appreciate it, and that raises people's awareness. Um, Sheringham, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, is the, the very heart of the reef. It, it's a lovely town, and that continues straight out into sea, whereas the town is sort of a busy, working little fishing centre. Um, the reef is, is a wilderness. It is a perfect wild wilderness just off the beach. And you can't, I mean, you can feel it with your toes, but without, without a mask, it's, it's completely hidden. We've got what people call gullies, but they can be two and three meters deep. You go down channels between high walls. Um, you can have a fantastic time. It is spectacular geologically. Uh, those have been cut by various features, but it's mainly an ice age landscape, just like the, the rest of East Anglia. Um, this is the kind of thing those big features will get you. So, shoals of fish in conditions that look Mediterranean. And because it's Norfolk, you don't get that year round, but this is July, I think, three years ago. And who wouldn't want to have a chance to enjoy that, protect that, and even appreciate it? And a lot of what we do is about creating a bit of, sort of local pride and sort of have people local people telling visitors that these things exist. This is another reason why you should appreciate the North Norfolk coast. Oops. Ooh. <coughs> you want to pop it? We'll go. Ooh. I'm sorry, I'm going back. You're going there. Ah, so I've got a backseat driver. This is... Sorry. <laughs> 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 you helped me and then I was... Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, um, there are various different kinds of diving. The, the, the dramatic stuff you see on telly is generally from boats, as manly people of both sexes. Um, don rubbery suits and are tutted over by people with beards. So I've got a beard, and all I gain really from the rest of the experience is still being able to dress like a child at my age. Um, but to make it more accessible, um, what we tried to do is rediscover shore diving, and this is sort of or oldly world where people just stroll into the sea and the Norfolk coast lends itself to that. You've got a, a gently sloping coast, you don't have to jump off cliffs, you can walk back again. Um, and that's made diving cheaper, accessible and simpler. And often more modern divers, old school, school divers, want to discover wrecks. They want doubloons and so on. Um, this family here are just after a nice day out. And having a shore dive has enabled the father in the middle to afford to have his kids go with him. And so shore diving is at the heart, and it means it, it, it remains a very local experience. You pop off the beach and you come back again for chips or, or ice cream. Um, th this is one of those things, just a little, yeah, no, yeah, so no smoke, no mirrors. Um, just to show you, you can go all the way from the shore into the water and you can see through it. So this is Dawn, my other half, stunt diver for the day. Um, you see, a lovely morning, typical, it was like, like this on Tuesday when we went diving. Absolutely perfect. In a moment Dawn will be at the surface and I, I, I'd like a gasp as she goes down through the surface. You, think, well, you won't be able to see her. Oh, oh. <laughs> Or you can, it, it's just glassy clear. It's not like that all the time. But this, this is a coast where there's almost no snorkeling. And you think, well, that, that's unimaginable. There's so much to see. You can just pop down, you can have a, a friendly dive. It's a great family diving destination, really, because you could happily take, take your children in and still see they were safe. Um, this is just by the shore, so that we're not seeing great buildings. So this is another 50 meters on. You've already got the mad wildlife. You've got 120 kinds of seaweed. Um, the crabs, which Norfolk is famous for, are everywhere. But we'll save you from those. In fact, I'll save you from the next bit as well. Because I'll say, so down amongst the gullies, we have sort of large-scale life like those fish, but we also have 
sort of a fantastic jewel-like animal. So this is a little cuttlefish, and it's not a little cuttlefish, it's little with a big L. Um, these things are the size of bumblebees, but they are perfect, and they are better than this remote. Uh, and they are terrifyingly ferocious. This is a threat display from an animal the size of a bumblebee who wants to kill me, pull out my guts, and eat me. <laughs> and so there's real wild wildlife. Um, oh. <laughs> I'll never get um, Next, please. <laughs> As well as the natural stars of, of this chalk reef, the, the chroma crab. Um, he's his own worst enemy because he looks like a pie. But, <laughs> but he, he is numerous, and it's sort of this signature wildlife like this, as well as a whole lot of other lovely, more exotic little things. Next. Um, Um, this is doing me no favours at all. Um, anyway, so what we, we're trying to engender a bit of enthusiasm to get this adopted as one of the marine conservation zones around the coast. Um, that's to recognise the healthy sea as part of a whole ecosystem, as part of the jigsaw of an AOMB, and important to local industry of traditional type, such as fishing, but also sort of those of the future, sort of tourism, diving and sort of eco-tourism as well. We try So this is a little film, and I think we've just got about enough time for it, and we did for the Wildlife Trust, which shows some of the, the highlights. And I said the chalk reef itself is a, a prehistoric tropical deposition. It's about 500 metres thick, um, formed by effectively algal dandruff, compressed over millions of years, but the kind of thing that sort of, if you let it pile up behind your sofa, 500 metres worth of dandruff, is, is a, that's a long time of not, not hoovering. You can see it's a, it's a beautiful place and this fragile chalk has been undercut by ice age rivers which have produced these little undercuts. It's home not only to chroma crabs, uh, but also things like pipefish, sea slugs. There's a, a wide, wide range of animals here. We've recorded over 350 species, and that's modest compared with what, what sort of land-based nature recorders can do, but we just don't have the luxury of being there long enough, because you, you have to come back. And that's what makes it sort of all that more precious. Whenever you visit, you know you will always have to leave. You can't spend an unlimited amount of time there. But it is a, a beautiful place with lots of facets. There's historical interest in the wrecks, geological interest in the, the rocky formations, uh, natural interest in the, the animals and plants there, and plenty of just visual in, engagement. We have um, people of all ages going and diving. And the, the, the shame is that it's kind of locked away from those who, who would enjoy it, but perhaps don't have the time perhaps already have too many hobbies to enjoy it, and so we try to carry it across to make it an active part. We've got sort of displays in local museums and do activities with local wildlife trusts, and the, the local coast partnership have been excellent in supporting a lot of the things we do. Um, and all, all for these little chaps, the, the real local residents, you can see even he's enjoying his seafood on the coast uh, <laughs> at Sheridan. He's waiting for the chip van to come along. <coughs> um, we run sort of specialist interests as well. This is a sea slug. These are, these are sea slugs. These are little tiny animals that eat other animals further down the food chain. So this is why you want a whole fully functioning ecosystem. You can't address sort of the coast simply as being a, a producer of crabs and pull them out until it's over, or drive wind farms in um, willy-nilly, because there's all these, all these pre-existing residents, if they had sort of argued for plan and consent, I'm sure they'd understand there needs to be the use of the sea, but to appreciate that they, the whole life chain exists there, um, and it, it's important, it supports a lot of the, the higher tier stuff that 
tourists just can't resist, like the, the birds that draw people to the coast. Uh, the best bit is when he covers his eyes up with his lip arms and sinks into the sand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's the alarm going off, which means the eggs are ready. Um, and this, this will be over in a moment, so don't, don't worry at all. Thank you very, very much for letting me have a go at you for time. And a moment, a lobster will attack you, and that will be a, a <coughs> It's all over. Thank you very much.